Hello families, this is Virtual Open House and I thought that I would go over many of the expectations for the year in kindergarten. Usually at Open House I send families home with packets of information which include the expectations for kindergarten. So I thought that I would just go over everything that's included in that packet since much of it is the same. So it starts off with um, activities for for development of fine motor skills. So there's a nice handy list here, which is some great things that you can do at home that we also do at school, such as coloring and painting, and just such simple things that you may not even have thought of, such as opening and closing a Ziploc bag, anything that reinforces this type of movement and proper pencil grasp is something that you can do. There's many activities that you can do at home and basically this is a checklist of all different ideas. Um, stringing beads or macaroni is some idea that some ideas that are mentioned. Lacing shapes, using large plastic needles to sew yarn into burlap, spinning tops. So obviously some things you're gonna have at your house and other things um, you're not. But this is a nice handy list. Um, zippering, so now the weather's starting to get cold. So zipperings, children should be expected to zipper and unzip their jackets and I give them strength strategies at school for doing that. We call it like the, the preschool flip that they may have done in preschool where they lay the jacket on the floor, they put their arms in, and then they flip it over their head. So that's one strategy. Um, what to do when the sleeves of your coat, you know, are stuck on the inside out. You have to pull your hand in and pull it out. So it's teaching kids step by step how to do that independently. Um, and that's what we do in kindergarten. So that is the first thing that's included in your packet for fine motor skill development. Tons of ideas there for you. Heavy work, the cross crawl movements that we do at school, so opposite hand to opposite knee. So we have some gross motor movements in there as well. And then next you're going to see a, I love this for parents. I think it's a great visual, really, for anyone in education. It's the um, Conventions of Writing Developmental Scale. And I'm going to just pull my camera over just a little bit. So it's basically how children's writing emerges through the years. So they're gonna start off with scribbles, and then you're at a different phase where you're starting to imitate writing, but it's not really a recognizable letter. And then now you have letters, usually they start off uppercase just because it's easier to write. And then you have some letters that are matching some sounds, and we call that phonemic awareness, where they might know cat, k, 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 and they start to write that C or the K. And then we have represents beginning and ending sounds. So usually children will start at the, the beginning sound first and then the ending sound, okay? And then the vowels come, come usually much later. Even though we're introducing them now, early in the year, it's not something that they're going to necessarily apply to their writing till much later in the year, and that is okay. That is okay. All right, in the end of K, this is what transitional writing looks like. So you notice there aren't, spaces are not secure. I think that's a nice little handy checklist. Although many students do get to this level, this is the standard. So basically we say it's two sentences that the children have written independently on one given topic. So say they do their weekend news and they went to the park and they wrote, I went to the park with my mom, it was fun and they try and they stretch out and they get mostly all the beginning sounds, they get the ending sounds, and they get some vowels in there. They may not necessarily be the correct vowels, however they do get some vowels, then that is something that is an end of the year standard. So this is a nice little developmental writing checklist for you so you can see what the expectation is. So if your child is not um, showing phonemic awareness yet, I mean, it's just the beginning of the year and this is fine. Vowels are not even secure at the end of the year. We teach them, however, applying them into their writing does come later. And that's something that as the year goes on that I will definitely be talking more about. Um, writing, writing even in the classroom is very differentiated depending on the student. Some students are a little bit further along and um, I may be going to expect something different um, for them in the way of vowels or even getting those um, 
Vowel combinations are not going to come in until later. Um, that silent E rule is going to come later, but for some children it does come sooner. So it is very differentiated based on where they are um, developmentally because all children um, develop at different rates. So it's really important that, like as a teacher, I recognize that and I'm not going to hold them necessarily to the same standard as the year as the year progresses, we all need to get to a point, but some children, it takes them a little bit longer than others, and that is completely okay. The worst thing you can do in the area of writing is really tell a child how to spell it, because then basically you're telling them that they cannot do it themselves. So you really want to isolate and stretch out those sounds for them and praise them for their effort, because then they're always going to look to you as to how to spell it. Now, of course, there are always exceptions like names, some proper nouns that we do tell children how to spell it and like they can just memorize it and that's fine. Um, but again, it's a very differentiated approach based on where the child is um, in learning their level of sound. So for example, this year, you know, I have some students that aren't secure with the letters in their name and I have other students that are reading. So it, it really depends on where the child is. Okay, so moving along, next in your packet is going to be grip. Okay, so grip, how to hold a pencil, and proper posture. Always reinforcing feet flat on the floor. I'm looking for this grasp. They say that this is acceptable, but I'm really, really looking for this. Okay, this is how we want children to hold the paper. This is how we want them. Now, I do have a lot of lefties in the class, and I do recognize that. Okay, so a righty is going to hold it this way. A lefty, which is tricky for me, the paper is going to be tilted this way. And we always say helping hand holds the paper. So the opposite hand holds the paper and guides it. Here we go this way. Just let me move it back a little bit. Okay this is how we write, okay? So if I notice that your child is having a hard time holding the pencil, I may give them a grip, and I may give you a grip at home to use for any writing task as well, just so we're using the same thing and we're consistent. All right, moving along. So we have proper grasp, what I'm looking for, that tripod grasp. Days of the Week song is in there. Your child already knows it. We sing it every day, but I have the words for you if you wanna know what the words are and do it with your child. Okay, so reading. So reading, these are the strategies that we use for reading in kindergarten. When a child comes to a word that they don't know, we tell them to look at the pictures. So don't cover up the pictures. We want them to look at the pictures to gain information about the story. We always start off with a picture walk first in an unknown book to gain information just based on the pictures so we're kind of tapping into our prior knowledge. After that, another strategy that we use is skipping hard words and then going back. So that's something that more towards the end of the year when we I have students that are a little bit more further along with reading, they're stuck on a word, they may want to skip it and go back to it. And then they can figure it out based on the other words in the sentence. Getting your mouth ready to make the first sound. That's a very early strategy that we use. A lot of times once they get their mouth ready, the rest of the word just kind of flows out. Okay? Rereading, asking yourself, does it look right? Does it sound right? Does it make sense? Chunk it, look it for smaller words hiding inside of bigger words. Rhyming, think of a word you know. If I know king is king, then I know sing is sing. So these are the strategies that we use. Basically at the beginning of kindergarten, I'm looking at these, I'm really reinforcing these three. So looking at the picture, getting your mouth ready to make the first sound, and then we say it's like being a word detective. So looking for smaller words, hiding inside of bigger words is a strategy that we use to try to figure out unknown words that we encounter. All right, move, and I know I'm, I know I'm going over this super fast, but you have your own packet that you can refer to as well. All right, so these are the kindergarten sight words. So your child is expected, really they're saying it's 26 for the report card. However, all of these 50 are introduced we definitely would like them to know all, the, all of these. So these 50 words. So on the top of my newsletter every month, I have the four to five, and as the year goes on, there's more sight words. I usually do two a week as the, as the year goes on. Right now we're just doing one. Um, but I will definitely introduce all of these. We will go over them and over them and over them. So they are really expected to know these 50 popcorn words or sight words, whatever you want to call them. So the words that are introduced are on the newsletter that you get for the month. I know September was like really weird, so I didn't send it out. We started late. Um, but I can give you a list of all the ones that have been introduced 
as well as the ones that come up for the month that you get at the top of the newsletter. So November will be coming out the first week in November and you'll see the popcorn words that are gonna be reviewed that month. So you know if you think that your child may, it may be something that you wanna make flashcards for and you can reinforce. I definitely test them before every marking period at least before a marking period. Um, so it's trimesters in Lincoln, so three times a year. All right, so with the exception, actually, I'm sorry, with the exception of the first trimester. I'm not testing them the first trimester. Um, I might test them on, on the words, just the words that I've introduced, but I'm not gonna test them on all 50. I'm only gonna test them on the words that I've introduced. So correction there. All right, so then I just included some math information. The math videos that I'm posting on the um, Google Classroom are excellent. So it really explains exactly what we're doing in class. And sometimes I use the video in class just be so that we're all on the same page. So my virtual students are, are getting exposed to the same content that is, that is happening at school. Um, with the exception I'm noticing of the problem solving task, the videos aren't doing a lot of the problem solving. So that is something that I'm going to have to supplement, especially as the, um, as it gets, as the modules get a little bit more difficult. So just some, some problem solving is there, but not all of it. So I really wanna make sure that I'm doing that as well. But the Google Classroom has everything that I'm doing because I still have virtual students that are learning at home. So if you ever have a question about how I'm teaching something, uh, it just refer to the Google Classroom because all the assignments are there. Um, in the event that there is a shutdown, that is the way that instruction is going to be delivered. So I'm still going to have a Google Meets or a Zoom. Um, I'm still going to post the assignments, and so any it will not be foreign to you because you've seen it all before. Um, the only thing is, as the year goes on, we do use different platforms. I do use Raz Kids, Zern, and iReady. Those are the three programs that I use. I am reluctant to do it now just because they're so little. Um, I don't want them on the computer learning in that way. Um, you know, I rather have them go outside and and. and gather objects and then name the beginning sound of those objects. I'd rather come up with like creative ways, group the objects, count the objects, instead of having them in front of a computer screen. So that's really the last thing I want for your child. Um, in the event of a shutdown, it is something that um, I probably will have to do um, however even with last year I said you know 15 to 20 minutes like that's it I'm not going to expect any more on a virtual platform so with that said I think that is the oh I wanted to okay so the math everything's explained I did have some writing from previous years from another student just to show you what it looks like by the end of the year expectation so this is something it's a class journal so it's a pet journal so everyone takes home and hopefully I can do it this year I don't know with COVID if I can but um, we have just like a stuffed animal that travels from classroom to like from from home to home um, so you know it's probably something I'm not gonna be able to do this year but it's just to give you an example of the um, the writing that occurred from it so they took the stuffed animal home and they had to write about like the adventures that they went on with it and so this child said I played with biscuit it was fun I read to biscuit he slept in my bed it is fun so there's only one period really at the end there but this is kindergarten writing this is kindergarten standard for the end of the year Notice, of course, it doesn't look like adult writing because they're only five and six years old, but this is the expectation for the end of the year. And you're going to see so much with these lines, especially if you're at home, if you're watching any of the videos, it's called the Fun Hub Videos or Wilson, and, it, and I have it right here. The, the boards that the children use at school look like this for writing and it also transfers to their writing paper so as they the writing paper basically looks like this where the lines are smaller so as they progress through the year with their writing right now they're just writing on one straight line um, and some of the children aren't even writing on the line yet just because it's the beginning of the year but as the year progresses they'll be expected to write on the line and they'll be expected to use the code so this is what we say we say that this is skyline plain line grass line and worm line so I did send home proper letter formation guide so if you're helping your child with the letters these are the cues that we use at school so for example 
Um, a is a plain line letter. It's a round letter, and it starts on the plain line. So little curve straight up and down. Little curve straight up and down. So you're using the same language that I'm using at school. And it says it right here for you. Point to the plain line. Go back to the plain line and down around the grass line. Then up to plain line, trace back down to grass line. Say it, A, apple, ah. And the child says, A, apple, ah. So it's exactly the way I teach it at school. So I sent that home for you. So I'm not gonna send that home again. Because I did already send that. And also, numbers, the correct way that we make our numbers. Okay, so the five. It's straight line down, big belly, and the hat goes on last. That's the way we do it in kindergarten. And the one is the straight line down. We're not going to make the one like this. I don't want the kids making the one that way. Um, because then it's backwards many times, and it looks like a seven. So we're just we're just not going to do that. So we, we say a one in kindergarten, we just make a straight line down. We teach them that, yes, that is a one. However, when we write the number one, we're just going to make a straight line down. All right, so this is the, I am gonna enclose this in the packet as well because I think it's super helpful. Like the at, like the eight is make an S and close the gate. This is how we make an eight. All right, so we have the numbers, the letter formation, writing at the end of kindergarten. The last thing I wanted to go over is what reading looks like at the end of the year and what your child, I'm sorry, my computer's moving, is expected to know. Okay. So I have some level D books. So your child is expected to be pretty fluent on a D. Not completely fluent where they're gonna get every single word, but where they're gonna get most of the words in a level D book. You may be asking, what's a level D book? I have no idea what that is. Well, I'm gonna show you. A snack for Roberto. So here's what we're looking for. We are looking for children, and I'm just gonna read it to you so you know a snack for Roberto. We want children to be pointing in the beginning of kindergarten to all the words in the book. So we're constantly reinforcing left to right, left to right, and pointing to each word. Now, as a child progresses and becomes a fluent reader, using the finger is definitely not something that's required. But this is what a level D book, book looks like, just so you know. We are hungry, said the kids. It's time for snack, said the teacher. Yes, said the kids. So, almost getting all of the words there by the end of kindergarten. Here is my snack, said a boy. It's a banana. Okay. So before your child reads this, they would be expected to look at the pictures to gain information about the story. Then they would go back and they would, should be able to read most of the words in a book like this. So I'm just gonna show you so you're familiar with it. Oh, look, said a girl, cookies. I love cookies. Here is my snack, said a boy. It's a muffin. So again, a D book, what it looks like by the end of the year, your child should be able to read it. Oh, look, said a girl, look at my snack, cheese and crackers. I love cheese and crackers. So I think that you get the idea. Uh, let's see, here's a, I grabbed a few. This one's a level four. This one is one that they have to be able to read in completely independently, um, and it should be easy for them. So it looks like this. This is one level down. This is level C. I like painting. You'll see it's much easier. I like painting. I am painting the chair red. I like painting. I am painting the door yellow. I like painting. I am painting the bed white. I like painting, I am painting the desk green. So I think you get the idea. Independently read this book, read most of the words in books like this. If you have any questions about leveled readers, I am gonna be, I am gonna start um, very soon, I'm gathering all the books now that we've been practicing at school and those books are going to be going home, so I do do a book bag. So every week or every two weeks, your child will be getting new books that will go inside the book bag that they want to learn how to read and we practice it at school and we practice it at home, so the book bag travels back and forth. So I think that's something that's really important that you're enforcing reading at home and then we're doing it at school and then they get all excited to get new books and they I let them pick out new books. So they usually get like five or six and they get all excited about it. So excited about reading is the first step um, to becoming a reader. So this is what, again, reading looks like at the end of the year. So the books that your child is going to get at the beginning of the year are not going to look like this, okay? Unless your child's reading, which most are not. Um, but it's gonna be very simple. Um, 
four, three to four words uh, per sentence per page. And we practice by pointing to every word. So stay tuned. The book bag is coming home very soon. All right, I think I touched on everything that I wanted to. If you have any questions, as always, reach out, email uh, anytime, and I will get back to you. Thank you.